Hello guys, welcome to the network. We're back here with another video. Today I'm going to be showing off um, the Shure SCM268. It's a four channel microphone mixer. It also has RCA inputs, four channel XLR inputs, and it also has four, four channels of RCA inputs at line level. It will output um, either line level or mic level XLR or RCA. I picked this up at work for $5. So definitely a really good deal. We actually had two of them. The other one had the knobs removed, so I didn't really pick that one up. But um, if I come across more of these, I will be picking them up. So this mixer has no love on YouTube. We're gonna change that. We're gonna do a video on it. Now, I'm not gonna do a teardown in this video, but if you guys really wanna see a teardown, I will do an internal look on it. I really don't wanna take it apart because I wanna use it, hopefully not break it. But it should be self-explanatory to take it apart. Just unscrew the front bezel pull the knobs off and then hopefully it slides out. Hopefully it's a full package deal. On the front you have your um, five gain levels. Now these are they're just the four XLR mic inputs and also you have an auxiliary input. So actually you have five channels. So four mic channels and then five total channels. Now this is um, transformer balance microphone inputs, five negative 10 dB line level inputs, six segment LED output level meter. And this does have phantom power, but it's only 12 volt phantom power. So if you're looking to hook up your standard condensers, this, this isn't really geared towards it. This is geared towards more um, microphones such as the SM58. Um, you know, this is more geared towards handheld dynamic microphones, like a PA system, something you'd use in church, maybe a school environment, even like a broadcast environment. That's what this is really designed for. So you won't be hooking up your Newman U87 AI, Abraham. Dang. <laughs> um, but it's still, this, this is really a still good, good product for um, when I'm doing videos, if I need to patch in multiple microphones or even patch in like a phone. Say I'm recording like a FaceTime call or something. So it does, it does still have its use case. Like I said, that's why you want to have multiple things in your arsenal for different use cases when those arrive, such as recording this video. So um, it does have a built-in low cut filter on microphone inputs below 80 hertz. And there is a model that has a power switch. This one doesn't have the power switch. Then you also have your master attenuator. Um, so I have the um, I have the Shure SCM268 um, manual. I'm not sure how much gain this microphone this offers, but I test it with the microphones I have and it easily drives all of them. 12 volt phantom power. Now the output level switch can switch between mic and line. Um, if you switch um, mic level output, it decreases the output by about 50 decibels. So you won't have to be using like an inline attenuator. Um, now, I'll overlay this diagram. But yeah, as you can see, it has RCA inputs. Um, so you can connect phones, um, tape decks, receivers, all kinds of different things to bring as an input. And it also has an RCA output. So say you want to connect it to your amplifier, you can do that as well easily without having to worry about XLR. It also has a mounting bracket, so you can mount it into a rack. I don't have the mounting bracket, because I don't think the place that had this was putting it in a rack. I think this was like something that they had on, on like a table or like, you know, under a desk or something. But it does have racks, and it has a rack where you can mount two of them side by side into a rack and slide it in. Pretty cool. And also, this does have uh, modifications you can do internally to change some of the low-cut filters and... Um, change um, disable phantom power and different things um, I will overlay the overlay those graphics in the video um, this has a, an EIN of negative 130 dBU that is a weighted with 150 ohm balance source um, 150 Hertz to 20 kilohertz plus or minus 2 decibel mic line input frequency response the aux input is 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz plus or minus 2 decibels Low cut filter, negative six decibels, octave below 80 hertz. Has a, a THD, one kilohertz at um, 0.25%. So that's just some of the noise specifications of this device. The EIN is pretty respectable. So not, not a very noisy um, preamps on this. So we're now gonna look at the, the unit, front and back. On the front, you have the five um, gain knobs your four XLR mics and your auxiliary. Now these also can control the RC inputs 
if you use an RCA input for one of these channels. And you have master, then you have your view, view meter. On the side, just blank. On the back, you have your standard NEMA input in. Another socketed Abe. Don't you like that addition? Then you have your XLR output. Now this will go to your, um, your audio interface, or in this case, it's going to go to a Zoom H4 Pro. You have, um, you have your mic versus line switch. This is for output. So if you want a line level output, you would have this um, recessed or you'd have this sticking out. If you want mic level output, you would have this pushed in. It also has one RCA out. And it's going to be mono because this is considered a mono mixer. It's going to mix all the mono. You're not going to have a left and right channel. So if you did hook this up to a stereo, you'd be hearing it out once, you know, just your left side speakers, unless you got like a Y splitter to have it spit out both. And then you have your, your four RCA inputs for each channel and aux input. So if you wanted to use um, RCA input one, you can't use XLR input one because these combine each other. And if you use both of them, it doesn't work well together. So either you have an XLR or an RCA. So if I, if I use both of these for mics, you're going to use three and four for RCA. And you also have this one. So you actually have three more available. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Abe? Yeah. So if you plug a microphone into, into channel one, you, this port becomes unavailable now. But if you plug something into this one, this one becomes unavailable. It's an either or. You can't use both at the same time. Um, so if you want to plug in four microphones, you only would have, how, how many RCA inputs would you have, Abe? Two. One. You just have this one. Just this one input. This is output. Okay. So, so now let's go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and connect it. Of course, you have your serial number. And I'm not sure when this came out. I think it was 2004 or something. These are still manufactured by Sure, and they run for about $260. Um, and I got mine for $5. And, of course, it's in used condition. So we're going to go ahead and connect it now. Before you plug it in, um, you're going to want to connect everything up. So we're going to connect up the microphones. Um, I'm going to be channel one because I'm number one. And the microphones that I have for this unit, I have a Shure, um, I have a Shure Beta 58A. And Abe's going to use this microphone. There you go. And Abe, do you want to um, plug it in? Plug it in uh, in the camera view. Oh, you can't? <laughs> How about I hold it and you plug it in? Oh, teamwork. You have a nice long cable. That's kind of overkill for you. Definitely. And we're using Mogami XLR cables. So he has the Shure Beta 58A, and these microphones will all pair perfectly with this mixer. Also, the Shure SM58 will pair well good with this mixer, which I have. And I am going to be using the EV ND76. We'll plug this bad boy in channel 2. Now we can't use either channel 1 or channel 2 RCA because those are being populated with microphone XLR inputs. And then we're also going to test out the RCA inputs of this device. Now when you're connecting the phone you can't have left and right but um, normally you're just going to use mono based. So for this one we're actually going to use the auxiliary RCA input and we have your typical 3.5 millimeter to RCA connector. So we'll plug this into Abe's phone. You're not using an iPhone, are you? Nope, it's uh, about three years old. Oh, and look, it has a headphone jack. Damn son, right Abe? So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And now, Abe's phone is effectively connected to the mixer as well. So if Abe wanted to play some sick tones or he just wanted to play, say he's talking to Kevin, maybe you could call up Kevin or something. And then now we're gonna connect this to the Zoom. So to connect this to the Zoom, you, it's important that you have this at mic level output. So you're going to want to push this input in because the line level on this is way too hot for the Zoom H4 and Pro. The Zoom H4 and Pro does not accept line level input. You'll have to have a deep attenuator and you'll have to have the gain on the Zoom all the way down. So we're going to use mic level input. That works best. So have a mic level output on this mixer into the Zoom and run the Zoom around 30, um, around a gain of 30. So we're going to use an XLR to XLR connector. Look at that. Plugs it right into the output. Looking sexy, isn't it, Abe? And now, you'll plug this into the Zoom, which we are using to record this video right now. You'll plug this into the Zoom H1 Pro and channel one, okay? 
So I plugged it in, you probably you probably heard it click there. So we have the Zoom H1 Pro hooked up to this mixer. We're still on the internal Zoom mics, but we'll switch over here shortly. And now we're going to plug in the unit using your standard NEMA connector. How's this looking on the back so far, Abe? Looking a little full. A little sexy? Does it look a little bit more complicated than a, a Yeti set, a little, little bit more to it? Just a little. So before we plug, you plug it in, you're going to want to have all the, all the dials on zero. So we got it fully plugged in. Now we're going to, you can see the back of this unit, which is getting pretty populated. But now we're going to switch it over so you can see the front. Because you guys don't want to see this thing in action. You want to see some VU action, right, Abe? So you should now see the power light on the unit. And then now I'm going to switch you guys over to the mixer. And see, Abe, you want to crank, you want to crank this down to 30. Check, 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 check. Where's our levers at? Check, check, Major check. 12. Good. Okay, so we are now back on the mixer. I am on input two. I was wondering why I, was, I wasn't getting any output. Well, <laughs> it's because I'm on input two. I was adjusting input one. <laughs> so as you can see, the mixer is now um, illuminating. Um, I could bring down some of this light if we have to. But Abe is on channel one, and you are using the Shure Beta 58A. Am I correct? Yes, you are. Okay. And we are we are plugged directly into the Zoom H4N Pro at mic level, and we have the gain around 30, okay, on the Zoom, because this is, this is mic level. You, the Zoom can't take in line level. You will um, blow your inputs. So you're going to have the master volume around um, 12 o'clock. Now, when you speak of audio terms, Abe, you're speaking of just like a clock. You know what I'm saying? So 12 o'clock is right here at the top, right? Yep. Where would 3 o'clock be, Abe? Can you move the master to 3 o'clock? Abe? Just like that. Abe, that's not 3 o'clock. That's 1 o'clock. Well, you know. So you got 1 o'clock, you got 2 o'clock, you got 3 o'clock, okay? And we should be sounding a little bit louder. But normally you're going to run the master with the Zoom H1 Pro around 12. And right now we're running both of our inputs at 12 o'clock on the mic. And you can easily see by the VU meter that this mixture fully drives these microphones, okay? So Abe, I'm going to turn you up a little bit. Can you go ahead and, and talk about your um, your workstation build? T you can talk about how you got screwed over or whatever for a little bit. Oh yeah, just uh, just the usual, trying to get the uh, motherboard, had to deal with a, a little issue, but got it all taken care of now. Should be on the road here very shortly. Vic's helping me uh, build it and uh, get all the parts I need for it, so. It should be coming together here soon. Okay. Now, now when you're talking into this, you want to make sure you're, you're watching your levels as well. I like to see this at least go into, like, the yellow a little bit because then we're starting to reach our, our um, target peak. You know what I'm saying? So, and also, when you're speaking into it, you don't want to speak into the side like this, Abe. You want to speak about, I'd say, what is it, six inches? Six inches from the capsule? Yeah. And direct dead on to have the best signal-to-noise ratio. So... Abraham is going to be building the workstation build just like me, and it's going to be several thousand dollars, isn't it? But it's going to be an investment because you're building something to last you 10 years, right? Yes, I am. So, and Abe, would you be interested in getting kind of like a, a mixer setup like this if you were doing like a podcast? Yeah, for $5, you can give me one. <laughs> so there was a couple of these that showed up at work, and I was able to pick this up for $5, which is a stellar deal. So I'm now going to test the attenuation on me, see how well this drives. And as you can see, did you see we started to get a little bit of red there? So this mixer, even at 3 o'clock, it easily drives this, these microphones. It actually drives them into clipping. So this mixer is definitely built for these handheld um, dynamic microphones. And I'm using the um, Electro Voice ND76. And I'm at 3 o'clock. I'm going to go back around 1 o'clock. That's usually where you want to be. Now, Abe, you can you can tell them about um, you currently have a Yeti. Are you looking to upgrade that? Yeah, I'm actually looking at the U87 AI. Directly, and directly into the mic, Abe. <laughs> have you used the microphone before? In no, church? no. Well, this no. is this is all new territory for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. So you want to be watching your levels when you're talking, see where it's at. So you're looking at a a, a U87 AI. Yes, I am. You know that is a TOTL, right? Hey. Top of the line. I try my best. <laughs> so um, Abe currently has a Yeti, and the thing with the Yetis is they're decent USB microphones, 
But in the studio, they're not really using the studio because you have all those components integrated. The ADC, the preamp, the audio interface, all that stuff is integrated, resulting in poor quality. Whereas with a setup like this, everything is dedicated, just like my EQ. Are you, are, we, are you also looking to get an EQ in your setup? Yes, I'm looking at a uh, EQ preamp, the whole nine yards. So um, what preamp were you looking to get into your XLR setup? Um, the model slipping me, but it should be the same one as yours. <laughs> Avalon VT737. <laughs> SP. Avalon VP? VT. Avalon VT. Vintage. <laughs> Avalon VT737 <laughs> XP. Okay, so Abe, Abe doesn't know what kind of equipment he's going to be getting for his workstation build. But it's going to be pretty pretty nice so this is just a quick look at the sure scm 26a you can easily see it easy drives these microphones abe do you want to show the microphone so as you can see we did have two microphones hooked up we're not pulling any tricks here going into the zoom h1 pro seeing peaks of negative 12 which is where you want it so this all pairs well together this is a really good setup i do recommend checking out this mixer thanks for watching Goodbye.